Well, welcome to my bench. And you can see this is how far we've got so far. And uh, uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to put the mainspring inside the barrel back here. You can see the barrel. Uh, put a mainspring inside that barrel. It's a pretty hefty mainspring. Uh, and we'll use a Webster winder to get it in there. And uh, uh, we'll clean it all up first and uh, get it in there. So before we do that, let me uh, take these plates apart and get the winder out here so I can give you a better idea of what it is that we're going to be doing. Okay, here's our barrel with the spring inside of it. Of course, I did not, uh, I put the spring in there, but I got the spring uh, wound up and uh, I put the arbor inside of it and uh, then we uh, put it in a winder which winds it up and makes it smaller. And then I took this uh, bale off of it so that it was loose. And then we uh, let it out totally loose and we'll clean it. And then we'll tighten it back up again. And we'll put this sleeve on it. We'll leave about two inches out of that little slot there with a hole in the, uh, so that we can hook it onto the hook in the barrel. Uh, let's see, there's the hook right there. And then we'll just turn it a little bit till that hook grabs it. And then tighten it back up and take the sleeve off and it'll be inside the barrel. And that's uh, what I got planned for today. Uh, and one other thing here we want to look at is uh, how do you know when you got the right size spring to the right size barrel? The volume of the spring to the volume, the area that the barrel has. Well, you want the spring to be at about 50% of the area when it's tightened and, and the other 50% when it's loosened so that you can get the full seven days out of it. Well, you can figure that out mathematically, but W.R. Smith came up with a tool to measure it. And uh, at the end of the video, uh, I'm, we're going to make this tool, and I'll show you how it works. And it, it'll help. It helps uh, measure to make sure that you got the barrel size and the spring size uh, together so that they work correctly. There's the mainspring as I received it, and it's all coil coiled up there and, and the baling wire on it. And uh, as you can see on the inside coil there, uh, we need that's where we're going to need to put our hook. So they've annealed the end of the, f the first few inches on there are annealed where the hole is, so that you can go in with these pliers and kind of uh, uh, bend it a little bit to make sure that the hook on your uh, uh, your arbor is going to grab that hook, uh, grab that hole well. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get that arbor and uh, see what we got here. There we got it. So now this is the main, this is the main string winder. Here's the chuck and the tailstock. Here we'll move it in there. We want to hold this thing uh, very tight. It's a pretty good size spring. So now we can wind the arbor. And I have the uh, the sleeve on there. I, I'm not going to need the sleeve for this operation. But what I'm doing with the sleeve now is just checking uh, to see how far down I actually have to, uh, how much smaller I have to make this mainspring to get it to fit inside that barrel. Yeah, I've got to come down quite a ways to fit it inside there. But let's get that uh, baling wire off there first. Hold on. Before I uh, get a lot of pressure on here, I want to make sure I got the ratchet set up right. There we go. Yeah, still a lot of room there. Yeah, but now we got the bailing wire off. Yeah, it still has to get smaller if I was going to get it in that sleeve. Uh, but let's release the uh, mainspring right now. This is the <laughs> this gets this is the exciting part. Uh, when you release it and you start to uh, unwind it, uh, you got to have to be really careful. You don't let it get away from you. Uh, that handle can do a lot of damage. So there we go. We got it now. We're just going to un uh, unwind it here so that we can clean it. There we go. Let's get it off of there. And we're not going to need the winder. We'll say take the winder off of there and we'll just put a, uh, a piece of uh, cold rolled steel in there. I'm going to use WD-40 here on a, on a green scrubby, or on a brown scrubby rather. And uh, we're just going to scrub the, uh, the mainspring. And... Uh, 
when you're doing this or when I'm doing it, I'm looking for rust. And uh, you can see that the uh, mainspring is very shiny too. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking to see to make sure it's shiny all over that none of that uh, uh, that shiny look has gone away. Uh, if I find rust, I throw the spring away and, and buy a new one. Uh, but this is a new spring, so we all it should be uh, able to clean it now. We're at the end down here, and uh, so we do a little bit of cleaning here. And I run back and forth at least two times. Uh, on this spring, I'm only going to have to do it twice. Uh, it's pretty well, uh, pretty clean. I'm running at about three times speed, so uh, uh, I've sped this up quite a bit. But you get an idea of uh, what I'm doing, and I'm, I'm watching what watching what the spring looks like. And there we go. Now our WD-40 is only clean, only for cleaning the spring. So now we got some mineral terps, and we're going back over it with the mineral terps. And that uh, cloth is pretty well saturated. And we're just trying to remove the WD-40. We don't want that WD-40 on there. So we're getting it off with mineral terps. And when I'm all done here, I, I'll make two passes as well. And when I'm all done here, I'm going to let it just sit for a while. And uh, let the uh, rest of the uh, uh, mineral terps uh, evaporate. Before I uh, put the oil on it. Yeah, it's looking really shiny and nice right now. Alright, a little bit later, I've got red hydraulic fluid on here. And uh, that's what I like to use for the mainsprings. Um, if you go on forums and stuff like that, almost every watchmaker has their own little concoction that they like for their uh, for lubricating mainsprings and their own way of doing it and stuff. Uh, this works for me and I like it. Uh, and uh, I, once again, I'll, I'll do it at least two times, but this mainspring is looking really, really, really good. So uh, just one more time should be plenty. You never want to make sure you have so much oil that's coming out the can. And now we're back on the winder again. And now what we're doing is we're going to uh, uh, wind up this, the spring and fit it inside the sleeve. And uh, you always want to wear plenty of eye protection and uh, gloves when you're doing this. Uh, I always do anyway. Uh, uh, it's going to take quite a bit of pressure to get that down. And I'm checking the hook in the back that's got the outside. Because uh, that hook has to be outside uh, the barrel. It has to fit inside that slot. So I'm trying to fit it all together so that when I slide that sleeve in there, I'm going to have about two inches of the spring to the outside in that slot so that the hole in the end of the spring can grab the, the hook inside the barrel. So I'm going kind of slow, lining it all up. And my big hand is right in the way, but even if I move the camera, you couldn't see too much. But you get the idea of what I'm doing. I showed you earlier how that sleeve works. We're just going to slide it on there as it gets smaller. Yeah, still got a ways to go here. But as you can see, the winding is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah, and that's still more. Alright, there it goes. I got it in there. You can just barely see the two inches out the back side. So now I got to release it and let the pressure off. So I'm releasing the pressure inside the, uh, inside the sleeve now so that the sleeve will be holding it and not the winder. And there we go. So now we're going to take the tailstock off here. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to slide the barrel over top of it here with the hook up at the top. And we'll find where that hook will slide nicely right behind the, uh, the sleeve. And uh, it takes you a minute. Once you find it, it slides, and then you just kind of clicks right in there. There you go. 
And now we'll just turn it a little bit until we can feel that, that, that the hook has grabbed the mainspring. Uh, the hook on the barrel has grabbed the mainspring. There we go. And one thing I'm noticing right now is I can't hold this with just my hand. So this is a little bit of a shel shelving uh, top. It's made out of uh, rubber. And uh, I can't hold it with that either. It's just slipping in my hand. Mm, I'm going to have to come up with something better than that. Yeah, I can't hold it. Uh, I replaced a, uh, uh, a, a, a tube in a, in a wheelbarrow uh, wheel. So I just cut a piece of the old tube out. Yeah, that's holding it really good. I got it now. So now I'm tightening it all up because i got to get that sleeve off of there. And so I'm tightening it all up. And uh, checking every once in a while to see if I can get that sleeve out. And now I'm letting the spring out. I've got the sleeve out. I'm letting the spring down again inside the barrel. All right. Yeah, there we go. Springs in the barrel, sleeves out. All right, we're at the bandsaw. We're gonna we're just cutting out the brass that we need to make this uh, uh, tool, the mainspring tool. And I'm going to be using a lot of the same uh, methods that I used in other videos. So it's going to go kind of fast. So I'm going to go quickly on this. Now we're at the drill press. And I'm using a stone there to relieve the back side. So I have zero rake angle on these uh, bits. Because I'm going to be cutting brass. And brass has a tendency to want to catch. So I'm just uh, slightly uh, stoning the back side of the cutting edge to get that zero rake. All right, let's drill some holes. There we go. Yeah, no lift. That's good. Okay. You just need to sharpen it, uh, just to shine it up a little bit on the back side. Now what we're going to do is hold these two together. So I'm tapping this side. And I put two screws in, so the two pieces are held together with these screws. And I've got an, a file here, and I'm just going to take off the back side of these screws. Uh, make them flush with the brass. And here's the belt sander. With the belt sander, I take it down to the line as best I can. Uh, just down to the line. Uh, close to the line, at least. And now we're over at the die filer. And this is where I saw, I'll actually take the line away with the die filer. Make sure my two pieces are matched up nicely. And when we're done, I have to come over and do a little draw filing to get the uh, uh, just to finish off the edge. And I use a file like this and draw a file, and then I put a little piece of sandpaper on it and uh, uh, take it up to about 600 grit. Now we're doing a little piercing saw work, and uh, if you've uh, uh, been watching, you I, I've got another video out that'll tell you a lot more about how I do the uh, the piercing saw work. Uh, it's called uh, crossing out the wheels, and uh, it's I'll cross out a couple of the wheels that I made for this clock. Uh, but the piercing saw is a uh, fun skill. Now once I'm done, now I'm back to the uh, die filer, and I've got a, a, a rough cut file in there and I'm just going to bring it down to the to the to the line and I, it'll get me into the corners to a bit but we're going to put a finer file on there, uh, a, a, a triangular file and that'll get us right into the corners and clean it all up nicely but uh, this is the rough file and we're back at the piercing saw again because we have to cut the slots so we're cutting the slots out right now. Uh, and there's my there's my lamp with the magnifying light so that I can keep right on the line. Uh, the, when I cut the square, I had an old blade in there, and uh, it was hard to cut. This new blade, I'm staying right on the line much nicer. Uh, never put your uh, 
uh, saw away with an old blade on it. There we go. Now I've got the thin, uh, this is a triangular uh, f a finishing file and we'll finish off the inside of the slots with it and then we'll use it on the square as well to finish the corners in the square. Just want to finish it off enough so there's not a lot of draw filing that need necessary. And now we're ready. We've got the, uh, we're taking the uh, dicom off and get a look at what we've got here. I made that button on the lathe and uh, that helps you push the uh, top one. So uh, it's going through a hole. I put a little 45 into the hole on the back here. So now we're uh, uh, riveting it on the back with the ball peen hammer. And then once I'm done riveting it, I'll, I'll sand it clear. Yeah, well, that works pretty good. That's going to be just fine. Alright, so uh, there's the mainspring in the barrel. And you bring this uh, top part over and put it right up against the arbor. And then you slide this top one until it's just inside the barrel there, at that little hole there. And then on to the right and to the left, those two angles, this one here and that one there, they want to be just on the edge of the spring there, and the way they show right now. And, uh, and that's how the uh, tool works. If this tool interests you, uh, uh, you want to learn more about it or how to make it, uh, the model engineer, April 15th, 1983, was uh, when uh, W.R. Smith uh, first published on it. But you can also find it inside his uh, book on how to make a skeleton clock, which is the one that we're using to uh, make this clock right now. And uh, all the information you need uh, necessary to make the uh, tool is in, this, uh, is in this book right here. This book here he's put out is a, a, a book full of uh, different magazine articles that he wrote. And he wrote one, of course, on the mainspring tool. And he includes all the mathematics that go into it. So if you're interested in f uh, following the math, this is a really the best one. This is, a, this is the one I enjoyed uh, uh, the most. And then I just recently got this one. This is one of his new ones. Uh, it's uh, his family put it out, I guess. Uh, and then once again, it's a lot of uh, uh, his magazine articles and uh, that have appeared in other his volumes. But the uh, mainspring tool in this one, uh, he's come up with a Englishman who came up with a different version of it that's a little easier to make. And I made one, and uh, you know it was okay. It's a little plastic. Uh, Thing you can make but uh, my original uh, uh, tool was made out of aluminum so uh, I really li like it so I decided to make it over again in brass for this uh, video so uh, anyway uh, this one it has a good article on it as well and of course if you want to do more Laurie Penman his book here has uh, more on the math of how to do it he doesn't use the same uh, uh, tool uh, but if you're interested in the math or somebody else's uh, look at how to do this, uh, Laurie Penman's book is a good one to go. Well, that one, that just about finishes this episode. And on the next one, we'll build this ratchet. And then we'll build the click. And we'll build the uh, click screw here. Uh, the ratchet is gravity fed, so there's no click spring. I want to thank you all for watching and uh, sure hope that you'll uh, come back and uh, see the next one.